Today we have Craig, who's going to be taking us through a bit of Blender. Um, as, as we go, please just feel free if you want to jump in um, and unmute your mic, if you've got any questions or whack in the chat um, and we can like keep keep um, addressing them as we go. <clears throat> Don't feel like you need to wait to the very end before um, you can jump in and Craig's very happy to get our conversation going um, as we go. Yep. So I think uh, I'll just pass it over to you, Craig. Thank you very much. Cool, thanks. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, and like Ross says, just uh, feel free to ask whenever um, you want to ask a wee question. That's fine. It's better than me just sitting chatting to myself. Um, so first off, I was going to show you is, uh, a really quick way of doing like a, an existing street model render. Um, so if you've gone and done like a, a, a site visit, you can just take pictures and then take them into Photoshop and like kind of warp them into an elevation. So if anyone is wanting to follow along, um, if you go to edit and preferences, you're going to have to turn on a plugin called uh, import images as planes. It's just here. I've already got it on. Um, so I'm going to go to file and import and import an image as a plane. It's actually a really handy ha add on. Um, it's pretty much the main thing that I use. Um, and um, I've got this image here of like an existing building. I actually got this off textures.com. I'll just show you it. Uh, everyone uses textures.com. Like, everyone knows it. Um, but there's hundreds of these building elevations and everyone kind of wonders like, what are they for? But this is essentially what they're for. Um, so you can go on and download these and they're really handy. Um, so I'm just going to bring in this one. Uh, yeah, it comes in quite small, so I'm just going to scale it up. If I go into plan, you can, it doesn't show up an image at the moment, but if you bring to get into like rendered mode or preview render mode, um, it shows up as like an elevation. So you can actually turn this into like a proper model just using an image. So if I press tab, you can go into edit mode and then control R and it brings up this, see this yellow line up and down the middle here. Uh, you can bring that up and then anywhere there's an edge, you want to place the line. So if I zoom out, I'll place another one right here. And you can just box in these windows really quickly. Um, and I'll show you why you're doing this in a second. And you want to get quite a lot of detail. See around the windows. Um, anywhere that's like high contrast areas, it makes a really big difference to like model them in pretty good detail. So once you've done that, I'm going to just close this. I've already done this. It takes a wee while. Uh, by the way, th this is kind of what we're going to end up with at the end of the uh, the, the whole workshop. So there's a few things to this. Um, but yeah, I'll bring up Street, go into Blender. So once you've done all your loop cuts, that's essentially you got it modeled. And at this point, you just have to like extrude. So you can select the faces, if you, if you go to face selection mode, you can select the faces you actually want to extrude. Uh, here, here, and here. These two as well. And if I actually go into 3D, when I press E and Z, oops, Z, you actually see that I'm starting to model it just from one plane. And all the textures actually wrap with it. So it's like, if I grab, I don't know, I want to inset this area and this area. I can press E, whoops, E, and then extrude it in the way. And then you can just keep adding detail on detail, um, like or inset the windows, etc. And you can really quickly end up with like a facade. Um, and it's so handy. And th this isn't even like, it already looks pretty good, but when you actually start to render it, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, so I'll jump over to where I've already uh, 3D modeled everything. I think it's this one, or it should be. Yep, here we go. So um, essentially I've offset all the bits that need to be offset. I've even offset a couple of bricks so it looks a bit more 3D. Um, and just to add a little bit of extra realism, I'm gonna add in a HDRI. So these are really cool. Um, it's probably one of the best bits about Blender. Um, if you go, this is your shading editor. So right now, 
this image, sorry, this face is rendered using a shader, which is actually an image, so it's that image. But we want to go to world and set the world to an image. And um, oops, I actually have a 3D model of a, sorry, a 360 picture that I got of Richie um, that you can actually use to get realistic lighting on like a model. So you made like a physical model, which we'll do at the end. And you can actually have it set up as if the lighting is in the six tier studio. Um, sorry, the level six studio. Um, so if I just go to assets, where is it? This is a HDRI. So it's a full 360 image and it will bring in realistic lighting. So if I go over to the renderer, you will see that, yeah, you're actually getting lighting from where the sun is coming from. So it's, a wee, it's darker on this side and this side. But you'll notice that our windows don't have any reflection at the minute because it's just an image at, the same, at this point in time. So if I actually select the windows, I can change the material of them. So I'll just do this one as an example. I'll go back onto object. Uh, this is quite tricky, but you'll kind of learn it over time. Um, I'm going to duplicate this uh, like material, change to it, and then I'm going to assign it to this window. Um, oops. There we go. Assign. That should work. If it doesn't, don't blame me. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to add a glossy BSDF to give it like a bit of shine. I'm actually going to remove this principal BSDF and you can already see it start to change. So I'm also going to add a, it's a refraction. Yeah, there we go. Or sorry, a diffuse. I'll add a diffuse instead. So diffuse and glossy. So if I plug them both in, okay, so the image into the glossy and the diffuse, we need to mix this together. So I'm just going to add a mix shader. Add that on there. I'm going to mix both shaders together and add it into the surface output. And you can already see that you're starting to get them like sun reflections. And I can even mess around with like the factors, so, like how transparent it is, how diffused it is. Um, it's quite subtle, but when we come to render it later, you see it's like, it makes like a huge difference. Um, so I'm just gonna jump onto the next bit. Uh, I think it is number four. There you go. Oh, sorry, that's a light, that's number five. <laughs> so essentially, I've already made a street um, just using uh, these facades that we've made. And you can start to see, actually, if we go into rendered, sorry, that's not rendered. Is that to EV for a sec? So you can start to see how like, the, the sky is reflecting off like, even these, these bottom ones. You can start to get the horizon, it's really cool. Um, and this is just a preview render. The actual render, you can get like a real-time sample render, which again is one of the amazing things about Blender. In 3ds Max or something like that, you'd have to wait ages or go up to render and like uh, do a wee test render or whatever. This one does it like real-time, even as you're moving around, just to get that perfect camera angle. I'm just going to put this down. It goes blurry and then it immediately starts to render. Like it's starting to look really realistic already. Um, but just to add that extra bit of realism, uh, I'm just going to show you a little trick that uh, is quite handy if you're doing architecture and you want to show like the inside of a building. So you'll see that I've already done uh, is make these windows transparent instead. So I've just done that by instead of adding, you can see down here, instead of adding glossy and diffuse, I've added glossy and transparent and just mixed it so that um, it's more transparent than diffused. And you can actually really quickly model the inside of a room. So I'm going to add a cube. Uh, make it pretty big. Just move into position just behind that window. Oh, you can move it up a little bit. And we're going to create a new material. So down here, um, I don't want just bog standard white color. So I'm just going to remove that. And I'm going to add an emission. 
So an emission is essentially a light. Um, so you want the color white to be the output of the surface. And if I put the strength up to like 10, it basically acts like a light. Um, if I put it, into, put it into cycles, you can see what I mean. That's a wee bit strong at the minute, but you'll see what I'm about to do in a sec. So if I change this back to render preview, I can actually add an image and the image essentially becomes the light. So thankfully, <laughs> I have a random picture of my living room, whatever it is, here. So I'm just going to make my living room into this model. Um, so I just connect the image into the color. So it outputs my living room as a color. But you'll see the scale is a little bit off at the minute. Uh, so I'm just going to go into edit mode, grab the faces, and I'm going to go to UV editor. This is a wee bit trickier uh, like to learn, but um, it's it's quite simple once you get the hang of it. But um, I'll, I'll pass on teaching it right now. <laughs> but you'll see, just the idea is there. This whole workshop will just be like uh, what you can do with Blender instead of an actual um, tutorial as such. Um, so I'm just going to rotate it, scale it down a wee bit. Uh, but yeah, you can already start to see. Um, it, it looks a wee bit fake just now. I'll put this down. It looks a wee bit fake, but once you go into like rendered mode and cycles, it's actually quite impressive. And if you're like rendering um, like a street scene and, you know, I don't know, this section is actually your building, you can actually start to like model in. Say you like did a render in, I don't know, a different software like Lumion or something like that of an interior. You can just add that in as like a background, uh, like it through a window, and it looks so realistic. Uh, and like I said, if you've been to a site, um, if you've been to a site and actually wanted to like take pictures of like all the streets, uh, all the buildings up a street, you can really quickly model the entire street pretty accurately um, and start adding people and things like that. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Um, the next is another way. It's it's less detailed, but it's really good for massing. Um, a lot of people struggle, like especially me. Like I struggled a bit uh, in the past, making like um, or getting the scale of your building in three D correct, uh, not using Digimaps because Digimaps is a nightmare <laughs> uh, and it's not accurate at all height wise. So um, this is a really cool plugin. Again, you go to Edit and Preferences to turn this on. It's all kind of built in, which is really handy. And this one's called Blender GIS. I've already got it installed. So. You basically go click on GIS and you can go to Web Geodata and import a base map. And we're going to use Google as the base map. And we're going to use a, like a satellite image instead of a map. So if you bring that in, it essentially brings up an entire like version of Google Maps. And you can even search. So for me, I'm going to use Perth Road, one that we all know. I'm going to set the zoom level to 17 so it zoomed right in. So here we are. We have Perth Road. So we're currently using Google Maps through Blender, essentially. Um, and I'm going to actually use a building that we all know and love. Actually, maybe not love, but... <laughs> um, and if you press E, it essentially turns that screen grab into a plane, similar to what we had when we were doing the building. But what we're going to do is slightly different. We're going to use that plugin again. So if you go to GIS again, Web Geodata, you can use this thing, Get SRTM. And that actually, I think it translates as shuttle real time, I don't know, mapping or something like that. It's basically some program that uh, they spent up, they sent a shuttle up and like measured like ground levels. So it's pretty accurate uh, contours. And if you click it, it'll immediately apply like the site levels to that plane. So you've basically made a ground in like two clicks of your site without even going on Digimaps or messing about with contours. And you'll see that's it loaded up. So you'll see like, we're currently on Perth Road. That's obviously higher than down near Tesco's. And if I go into like that view, you can see how it's all sloping and it's done it automatically and it's all to scale, which is so good. Um, but the best bit, <laughs> I keep saying this, but honestly, this is brilliant. You can go to get OSM and there's lots of things here, but I'm actually going to import buildings and I'm going to have them extrude off of the plane, which is the Google import. 
Um, if I click OK, it really quickly actually imports what you would get off Digimaps. But instead of having to offset everything with contours and all that nonsense, it actually already, already has everything set to the correct height. And you can start to really quickly understand where the roads are. There's no messing about with like uh, overlapping like Google Maps on top of like AutoCAD or whatever, trying to work out where you are. Um, so it's really good, really handy. It just helps you make really quick site models. You can even go like if you don't like having that street texture, which I find quite handy to like uh, orientate yourself. Um, you can go and just click minus and it'll just remove it. And there you go. You've got contoured site map in like four clicks. <laughs> it's really handy. So um, I'm actually going to bring that back. Um, and always say you're, you know, wanting to investigate DJ CAD, you want to do like a little um, site analysis on it. Um, obviously, this model isn't very good. It's just a kind of placeholder. It's good for kind of scaling and positioning a building, but we want to get more detail. So I'll show you a little trick. And a lot of people don't know you can do this um, with any software. Uh, it's something that I bet a lot of us <laughs> wish we knew. Um, I'll just quickly delete this pretend EJ CAD. Um, let's get rid of all these vertices. Takes a wee second. So we are essentially just left with like a blank site. So I'm going to actually replace DJ CAD with like a higher res model. So I have this here. Okay, I'll just bring it in. So everyone knows that if you can, you go into Google Maps, you go into 3D. Uh, Google Maps actually has like 3D models that they've essentially scanned in um, using satellite imagery. Um, and they are pretty accurate, like they're to scale, they look good, um, and you can do this anywhere around the world. It doesn't have to be Dundee, I'm just, I'm just picked Dundee. Um, but you can use this really cool software called RenderDoc. Um, it's a wee bit tricky to learn, so I'm not gonna show you right now, but I'll, I'll show you what it does. Um, you essentially go to File and you inject into this Chrome tab, and you can go to Mesh, is it Mesh Viewer? and you essentially press print screen while moving around. And it actually prints the 3D model as it goes through your computer. So but like instead of coming up as a 2D image on your screen, it actually takes in the 3D data from Google and basically rips it uh, and takes all the textures and everything and imports it, uh, sorry, uh, uh, turns it into basically an OBJ that you can take into Blender. So if I open up, I've got an example file for you. I think it might be this one. Yeah. So it looks a wee bit rough at the minute. I'm just going to close that previous one. Don't save. Go. Cool. Um, it looks a wee bit rough like this. But if you go to materials, you'll start to see that you've actually just imported a Google 3D model right in to blender and like you could place your building right on this and no like no one knows this it's just like no one uses it i don't know why it's so cool and so handy and like google has this amazing resource that everyone could use uh, so now you know um just look up render doc um I'll, put, I'll actually take that in the chat render doc and there's loads of tutorials on how to use it uh, online so um, you can actually then overlay this. So like if you want to go in, like edit it, um, I want to maybe grab this selection. You can import it back into that previous uh, model that we had. So I'll show you that. Um, and this is like really hard. See if you can't be bothered rent like or modeling like the background of a scene or whatever. Like I've just modeled, imported it in and you've got a really quick like site model first off. But you can then zoom in and go, okay, well, my building's here next to the church and that's the scale of it. It's like, it's so handy. And we've just done that in like five minutes, 10 minutes. It's like unbelievably powerful. Um, so that was two of the main things I wanted to show you. Um, I'm actually going to show you a little example of other um, other things you can import. So this is like Manhattan, uh, Manhattan Bridge. I'll just wait for this to load. Um, 
this is just one that I had kicking around from another project. Um, it's like brilliant, <laughs> and some of them are way more high res than others. Like this bridge is really high def because everyone knows it, and someone out there has modelled it uh, out their own time. And like you can get big. You don't have to just import like one or two buildings. Like this is one of like I think it's Hong Kong Bay, um, and it is massive. <laughs> Uh, I'll add materials yeah look at that it's really impressive so I, I, I've seen guys doing this to like the whole of like Manhattan um, and just having a nice little 3D model of Manhattan um, so yeah quite impressive um, so the last thing I was actually going to show you was I had people asking me how to do this in my course so um I, uh, like in my year because I showed them some work but um, this year obviously we can't get into studio everyone's missing out making like site models um, so I'm going to show you a really cool way that you can make the site models basically look real really quickly like we'll have it done in 20 minutes 20 minutes I reckon um, so this is a model of Barcelona Pavilion that I had from like, I think Richie did it with us in like second year or something. I can't remember. Um, but I just had it kicking around. I was like, why not? We'll use that for the tutorial. So I made this fake contour site map uh, really quickly, like say like 15 minutes. Um, and the important thing to remember is when you're importing, especially from like SketchUp or something, uh, or Rhino, like I'm using, into Blender is... Uh, oh, sorry, you've got a question. How does it look once rendered? Can you render? Are you talking about the sitemap? I'll just show you that now. Um, so, I'll, need to, I'll actually add a HDRI because we've got a wee bit of time. Um, takes two seconds. You can add HDRI. I'll render it for you. Um, the cool thing about um, oops, Blender is that um, this uh, there's two modes to rendering, EV and cycles. If you go into cycles, it basically gives you a realistic render of what it would look like. Um, I'll just add this. This isn't very realistic because it's studio lighting, but it's my favorite. Um, so if you're to go and render it, sorry, it's a bit blurry, but like it would look like that, which is pretty good. Um, it's quite impressive and I mean this isn't even realistic lighting this is actually if I zoom out it's a studio <laughs> with a fake lighting so uh, this is like perfect if you're doing like a site model you can actually add textures to make this look like as if it's a site model um, which we'll do later on uh, in this next tutorial but um, you can see how like the light's obviously bouncing off that back white wall and then it's casting shadows as if it's actually there so um, if you've ever been to like a museum or something like that and seen like a little train set, it's just the exact same. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, it is, it's so handy having this cycles thing here. And you can even add like denoising and things like that. It just, it comes out amazing and it renders so fast. If you've ever sat waiting like hours for something to render, think again, you'll never do that again. <laughs> it's brilliant. So um, hopefully that helped you. Um, right. So as I was saying, um, if you want to like import a model like this into Blender, the most important thing is to have it grouped properly. So um, I have grouped it uh, into materials. I find that the easiest way to do it. So for like glass, I've grouped that as glass uh, or like wood. What I want is wood, water. So um, it's just really easy to apply materials really fast. So I always export it as an OBJ. But I've already done that, so I'll just open up Blender. And if you didn't know, <laughs> Blender is free entirely, like totally free. Uh, you don't have to pay thousands of pounds like you do with like 3ds Max or something like that. Um, anyway, so file import, and we're going to uh, import an OBJ. And I think it was site model which is now gone. Site model. There we go. Assets. And it was model OBJ. Um, when you are importing an OBJ, make sure to always put up as Z. Um, that's just one thing that 
a lot of people mess up and they may wonder why their building's upside down or whatever. Um, take off split by object and put it as split by group because we've just grouped it up in Rhino as groups. So um, import, it'll take a wee second. Um, but it's faster than most software. What's, what's it like on like computer specs? Blender, computer um, to be honest, my computer is not that powerful. I've got like a, I think it's a 970. Um, it's not the fastest, but it's honestly amazing how like uh, not intensive it is. It's really impressive. Like it, I thought it was going to be like, I'll show you some examples later on at the end of this of people who are doing like feature length movies um, and like they're working off like a computer just like miter years or, or a laptop or whatever <laughs> and they make like 10 minute long videos obviously rendering might take a while but um yeah. it you know but it compared to other software is so much faster and that's all you really need to worry about like the the real time rendering um, is not impactful at all and you can even change it like uh, right now i've got to see the viewport set to 16 you can lower that down to like like i don't know five <laughs> you can get like a sample render really fast like it looks good um anyway so this model's too big so i'm just going to scale it down um but actually I pro i'm gonna i actually wanted this problem to happen if you bring in a model that's too big a lot of people are like oh my god where's my model <laughs> if you zoom out you'll realize it's far too big and then blender does this really annoying thing that it has this like fog of war type thing that like, you can't see past a certain distance if you just press n and go to view you can put it up to like you know pretty much infinite like, <laughs> it's brilliant so you can now see your full model and if i scale it back down to the size that i actually want it to be uh, which is pretty small because obviously it's a little site model that we're making uh, as if you're in studio so there we go we have that i'm just going to put that back down so it's not too intensive cool um so we now have our model in uh, and as you can see on the right, we've got everything grouped just the exact same way we had in Blender, uh, sorry, in Rhino. Um, so you can like move the wood, look at site contours. So again, there's a really cool plugin called Blender Kit, um, which is this bar up the top here. I'll actually turn it on. You can turn it on and off here. Um, but essentially you can bring in materials without messing about with, because so many people struggle with this shader editor. I was talking about previously um everything's disappeared but this thing with all the nodes it can get quite complicated but this basically does it for you if you struggle but you you'll pretty much get as good results it's just you won't have the customizing that you can if you do it yourself but um i'm going to go to materials to so get materials and whatnot so i'm going to just look for like wood so if i bring in wood uh, let's go for like a nice dark color so I want to apply a nice dark color to my like main base model. So I just click and drag and see how there's a little white pointer. I'm just going to point it right at the model and it loads it and then brings it in. If I go to render preview and um, you can see it looks a wee bit rough, obviously it's like SketchUp right now, but <laughs> when you actually come to properly render it, it looks amazing. Um, and you can start to see the grain and you can see it's already done all that for you. <laughs> this is a pretty complicated one. Um, so yeah it's pretty handy so i'm just going to do that to the rest so with the contours i want to go for maybe a lighter wood like uh, something you would laser cut so maybe something like this that looks cool let's do that whoops let's just put on the wrong thing oh no my blender just crashed <laughs> that's not a very good advertising campaign is it <laughs> apologies for that <laughs> technical difficulties jesus that never happens Sorry, lucky I brought up an extra save. Cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> I've already applied all the materials, but just as like an example, um, for this, it, when I brought that material in, the scale was too big. Um, so as a site model, I've noticed that if you if you want it to look like an actual site model, your best bet is to pump like bump the scale right up so that it looks like massive. Um, totally unrealistic basically and um, so to do that i've just selected the material oh, the object sorry and there's this bit called mapping and you can change the scale down here it's already like pre-generated into it uh, someone else has done this for you so it would usually come in as one 
if I zoom in, you can see it's tiny. The grain's minuscule, as if it was realistic. But we don't want that. We want it to be massive. So I'm going to put it down to 0 0.05. And there you go, it's massive. Um, again, this is an actual final render. Uh, I'll show you the preview render at the end. So yeah, we have our scene. And I really like uh, HDRI Haven. I'll show you this. This website's really cool. Um, the, usually HDRIs are very expensive because they're huge files. It's not like textures.com where you can go online and get them for free. And like I said, Richie actually gave me one. Uh, like he, he 3D, uh, like sorry, took a 3D photo of Studio. So in my project, um, I've actually got my site model in studio with realistic lighting. And I've even got, I think Helen's in the background <laughs> looking over my model. <laughs> so um, very realistic. But yeah, you can take any of these. Um, I really like this studio one. I use it with like everything. So don't take my ideas. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can download this any size you like. I usually stick with 4K. It's usually big enough. Um, it doesn't make a massive difference. You can even make your own. You can go out and take 3D images um, with like your camera. Well, you can get like apps on your phone nowadays and make 3D, 3D images. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do it the same way I did with the previous model. I'm just going to go into shader editor. Uh, I'm going to change it to world, and I've already done it actually. I um, added an uh, environmental texture, and it's the studio. Um, so there we go. And uh, now, if I go into rendered mode, you'll actually see the background um, appear. So it's as if it's a real site model, which is quite cool. Now, obviously, it looks even bare at the moment, so I'm going to add a tree couple of trees. So if we go up here again to that Blender kit, you can go to models and then it shows you a load of examples, but I'm just going to look up tree, look for a really simple one. That's quite a nice blossom tree. We'll add that. It's quite small, so I'm just going to scale it up by pressing S and then just moving my mouse and just does it for you. It's like a one click one there. Oh, that's far too big. Uh, it's the wrong way. Here we go. Um, you'll occasionally see, especially with trees, that they have these little red dots on them. So these are, um, so Blender is not just a 3D rendering software or modeling or whatever. It does pretty much everything. You can do animations that have made things like Toy Story and it, it's like, <laughs> it's really impressive. Um, so these are called like particle effects and they're really good. See so if you want to do like grass or something like that in a proper 3D model. Um, the particle effects tabs here, you can look at, there's so many YouTube videos. I'll give you a few links at the end um, and I'll show you a few examples actually of like grass and how they use particle um, effects. But um, basically each leaf is a particle and it renders it when you click render. So the model's really fast. It doesn't impact your model at all. It's just a particle and it doesn't appear until you render it. And even then it renders it really quick. And you can make your own with these. It's really cool. That's how they do like, um, you know, Monsters Inc. and you've got the what was that blue blue monster guy called? Anyone know? Sully. <laughs> Sully, there you go. Yeah. So they actually developed this software, not this software specifically, but particle emitters for Sully. Um because they didn't know how to render so many hairs. So they just made this. But anyway, um, we're gonna remove it because uh we don't need leaves on a site model. Um and I'm gonna go to shader editor and we're going to change the material of this because right now if we go to rendered it is like a trunk it comes in with like proper wood material it's quite cool but we don't want that so we're going to remove both of these we're going to apply new texture so we'll go to object new texture not that one take that off whoops what on earth just happened there we go new uh, and I'm just going to leave it white, to be honest. I don't think I need uh, anything else. I like little, as if they're like 3D printed trees. Um, and you can just start dotting them around the place. Right, if you press the uh, Shift G, you can start. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Shift duplicate. And actually, what <laughs> this is actually really handy. I wish more software had this. But um, you can grab here. If I delete that one, sorry, delete that one. You can grab that and your parent. 
it's a strange word, but uh, it's basically what the model is like attached to. Um, and I'm going to put on this here, which is basically object snap, but it's two faces. So I can go from here and press Shift E, and I'm just going to duplicate them around, and it sticks them to the ground, which is really cool. <laughs> like how fast we can make a little site model. Um, and you can like change the scale of them, whatnot. They don't have to all be the same. Yeah. Cool. So um, to render that, you would essentially just go to cycles. We know we just double check what it's going to look like. Um, there we go. Looks quite cool. And you want to add a camera so you get the the correct like positioning. So there's a really cool wee trick actually if you want if anyone wants to write this down and have a plan to use Blender. Um, you can get into your position and then just press like uh, most people that use Blender don't even know this, but uh, Control Alt and then Numpad Zero. And it, is, it basically if you or sorry that's stupid. I need to add a camera. <laughs> so the camera is now in the scene. If you press Control Alt Zero, it makes the camera your view. Um, which a lot of softwares don't have, and it's quite nice to have. Um, so I'm just going to move this a little bit, make sure it's perfect. Cool. So I'm just going to do a wee test render of this scene. It's not exactly where I want it, but it'll do for the tutorial. And you can see an example of what it might look like when it's done. And it actually looks not bad. The, the, the wood's about the right size for as if it was a scaled model. The trees look pretty good. Uh, and it's nice having a little light in the background as if it's real. Uh, the, shade, the shadows are in the right place. So I'm going to close this and you can see what it looks like because I did render this one. Um, so if this opens, my computer's been having issues opening images recently. I don't know why. There we go. You know, so that's basically how it comes out. Um, and, you know, that's before you even do like Photoshop post uh, on it and whatnot. And you can like, I mean, that, that blue watercolor is pretty tacky, but like, you can you can make it look like, a, like that. we made this so fast. If you spent more time on it, it looks amazing. Um, here's another view that I had. Um, that's the same one that we put the camera in. And you can like really easily just, you know, do your Photoshop thing, add people, you know, you turn the opacity down a little bit or something. I don't know. Um, do something, you know, fancy. I don't know. Get edgy with it. Get Bartlett. You know, add some balloons. Who knows? You know, everyone loves a balloon. You know. So, um, yeah, there you go. You've got a physical model that was just modeled, well, not modeled, rendered in like 15 minutes. Um, and it looks pretty realistic. Like, look, the wood grain is fantastic. And it's just totally imported from that Blender document. Uh, sorry, Blender Kit, we call it. Um, so that's basically it that I'm going to show you for just now. But I'm, I'm going to show you a few examples before I finish up. Um, so this, I, I did say it is an animating software. Um, so I've done a little bit of animation, just like messing around in the past. So um, this was on my Instagram, if anyone follows me on Instagram. This was when I was learning Blender. I just thought it was like, it's really cool how you make these things. It, like, it looks pretty realistic. And that, I think that entire animation, anyone that's ever tried doing animation will know how long it takes to render something. That entire animation only took about 25 minutes, which would normally take like three hours on like 3DS Max or something like that. Um, I actually did a little project over a uh, summer um, this was like, it was a silly competition. I think we had like a week to do it, but this was my first time ever using Blender. And like, you can see, this was a particle system, the grass here, and then just the background was for the project. But um, yeah, you can see how quickly you can get really nice. That, that was like refraction of like water outside. It's like, you can get really nice, crisp looking renders really quickly. We're in such a rush for this project. Um, I, this one was from last semester. I, was I wanted to make a big concrete model I couldn't because I wasn't in the studio, so I just made it in Blender because you can. Um, and it looks pretty good. Um, so, yeah, uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is just these examples. So this is a guy, he's on YouTube, he's called Andrew Price. Yeah, but everyone knows him as Blender Guru. So I'll actually put his name in the chat. If anyone wants to learn, he is 
the guy to watch. Um, he's the best for like teaching. Um, and I'll show you another guy that's just really impressive uh, as well, but he's not as good at teaching. Um, but yeah, th this is a little animation that he did um, of a cabin. He's not an architect. It's not the most stylish building in the world, but it's just a really cool little animation. And he did all this in Blender. Um, no post either. This is totally raw from Blender. And you can see how, like, you know, that car is just from like Blender Kit. The, the guy's from Blender Kit. The building's probably from Blender Kit. You can see how he's used like the particle system for the leaves, the ground, the sticks. Um, it's really cool. And like, you can learn these things uh, on, on YouTube. Like, there's so many tutorials on how to do this stuff. Um, I've seen guys that have only used the software for like two weeks. I mean, there's a tutorial. Make a cabin in the woods in 15 minutes. I'm not sure if I could do that, but <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, really impressive. And if you want to go on his art station, he's got loads of stuff. Like, uh, I don't know what's in his portfolio. 3D, let's have a look. Like, oh, I remember watching this tutorial at Subway. He did a wee animation through it. And you can see, uh, that what's really impressive about this is all the, the chrome and how like the reflections work. And that's all down to HDRIs um, and the 3D images that I was just showing you earlier. Um, and the last guy I wanted to show you was actually this. This guy like pretty much got me into Blender. Um, he is actually making a feature length film just now. His name's Ian Hubert. And he does these things called one minute tutorials, which are definitely not tutorials. He's just showing off. You cannot follow them. There's no way you can follow them. But um, he's got little montages of how he's making his movies at the minute. And I thought this was a really good bit here. Um, where is it? Just this. He did, he's done like rigging of like arms. He's then added like materials. And you can see the real time rendering, the, the physics of the water. He's added cubes. See how we remember um, we made like boxes and then applied an image to it. He's just doing the same here. He makes boxes and then just took a picture of some like <laughs> veggie curry and just cropped the faces to match the vegetables. So now he's got some vegetables and he's just going to drop them in a pot. And look, he's got like a guy making a stir fry. And wait until you see the finished render. It is unbelievable. Like, here it comes. There you go. Actually, that's not even the finished one. Look at that. How good is that? And that's literally just from like pictures of a guy eating curry and a few boxes. Like, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. And he, he goes on to do other stuff as well. Like, this is amazing. He took a video of uh, water. So, see how I was talking about using like an image texture? to make a model. He is using a video to make a model. So he takes the video, cuts it, and like the actual face is a video. So he's basically gonna make a waterfall right now using photo scans of rocks. I was gonna teach you how to do that as well. That's really handy, but it takes too long. But um, you know, like look how fast he's just adding random things and all of a sudden he's got a waterfall and he'll show you the finished render in a sec. Look at that. Just from like a video of water, some particle effects, and some 3D uh, photographed rocks, and he's got a waterfall scene. They would take you weeks to model, uh, like traditionally. Um, but yeah, there you go. He's using GIS for that, actually. <laughs> the thing that I'd show you, showed you previously. Uh, this is the last thing I'll show you. Um, That's a 3D scan. Uh, if you've ever spoke to Richie, he loves 3D scanning. Uh, I think it's the LiDAR, is it, what would you call that, Ross? Do you know the thing that he uses? Yeah, I think it's a LiDAR scanner. LiDAR scanner. Well, you can actually do it with just a camera, like your mobile phone. So he just goes around, takes pictures of his girlfriend, and he imports it into Blender, and Blender knows where the camera is and creates a 3D model from um, just the photos. And now all of a sudden he's got a model with a uh, like human features and the, um, the actual shading accurate and he can just make these really cool like he goes on to make a spaceship and then the spaceship goes into this like this whole green screen like look at that he made that from like models of his girlfriend <laughs> that he just scanned it's really impressive so yeah if you want to see his movie you can check him out on youtube it's really cool but um that's pretty much everything i've got to show Hopefully he's liked Blender. <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit different um, and fun. Um, yeah, oh, that's that's actually incredible. The different, <laughs> like all the random things that, that it can do. But yeah, 
I can totally see the the benefit in like certain tasks. It's definitely um, it's got a really steep learning curve. Um, and it took me a lot. Like I'm still a beginner at it. Um, but once you get the hang of it, the things you can do really fast is absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to learn more about it, feel free to either message me or I'll put a few links, like uh, names of people on YouTube, if you want to have a look around. But yeah, hopefully it was helpful to people. What's the, what, how is it, um, like, what's the compatibility like with other, like, 3D softwares that you might want to, like, jump in between? Does um, it, or is I've, it more on? I've used it with Rhino, I've used it with SketchUp, and I've used it with AutoCAD. Um, they're the main that I use. I don't know, is it, is there any others that people use? I know, like, you can't obviously take it into Lumion because that's just, like, a rendering software or something. Um, yeah, okay. But um, yeah, it, it, most rendering softwares, oh, sorry, modeling softwares that you can export for, uh, as an OBJ uh, works fine. So Rhino is my preferred method. Uh, but I know that SketchUp does work as well, but you have to like, group things. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it is amazing the things that you can do. Um, the, like there's even a sculpt. If anyone's ever been interested in like sculpting, there's a whole tab. Like I've just been looking at layout tab, but there's also like sculpting tab, which you can like really easily. Uh, I've never actually used it to be honest, but <laughs> I've seen people making these incredible like sculptures. I know that people down in the um, animation department use that. Um, again, you've got like animation tab. You can start like that's how I did that ball swinging thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can do it. And pe people are starting. I don't know if anyone. I used to use it. Um, flash animation. Um, oh, I remember from like back in school. Yeah, like ba back as a kid, you would like draw these little stick guys and like you would make them twine together. So it was like you're making a three, like a two D animation. And uh, loads of companies have actually just moved over to Blender because it does it better. <laughs> so like you can do two D animations easily in this. Um. But yeah, has anyone else got any questions? Like, it is a very weird software. Not many people know many things about it. Yeah, if anyone's got any questions, just fire them into the chat. Or there's a Q&A box, which I think. Um, I need to open that. I'm not sh I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, I don't know if Glenn would have to unmute. Oh, answer. Oh, q and I've got one from Brendan here. Is there a material aging slash grunge tool? Yes. <laughs> um, you can't, like, the, so the thing with uh, Blender is that it's not actually, uh, it's not like you just, like, th this is an add-on, so you can, like, there's grass that's more, like, got more grass on it, or there's soil that's got less grass on it. This is like an add-on. If you actually wanted to like do materials, it's a wee bit more tricky. Um, like if you want to do wood, uh, it's really hard. You have to add like wave nodes and things like that and actually create the grain. And then like you actually make the texture unless you add like an image. If you found an image online, say, let's just go on textures.com. And you want like concrete. There you go. So uh, you would just take in that concrete, but if it's not the one that you want, if you want more like aging, you can just like go here and like, or like, I don't know. You, you just look for the correct material that you want and add it as an image. Most people do it, do uh, materials that way. They just add it as an image. Um, so similar to what I did at the start. Um, but if, if you want like detailed like things that you can change and like slides like you can do that it, it it's got like i don't know if he's used grasshopper much but grasshopper is like quite procedural and you can change sliders and things like that you can do all that here uh, this has got like math nodes and things just the exact same as grass grasshopper um so it it does everything um i'm good no worries it's pretty incredible stuff i think it's just i was um like didn't really think about it because I just thought it was not an architectural tool, but like a yeah, kind of uh, CGI kind of modeling tool. Yeah, a lot of people think 
uh, it isn't an architect. I, I, I mean, the thing is, it's not an architectural tool. It's uh, an animating tool. But so is 3ds Max. Uh, yeah. It's just it's more powerful. Um, but you, you can see how good the lighting is. So you've had like a monkey. <laughs> I don't know why this is a, a feature, but you can like that's not even rendered mode within the cycles. You can see how good the lighting is so fast. You can even like subdivide. I've not done this in a while. We can add like a subdivider. I was like, it's the UI that's kind of like the barrier to entry because it's got so many little tabs and yeah, things that you, know, you can't I, easily find. I find it much easier than like Shade Smooth. Um, I find it much easier than like 3ds Max or something like that. I find the user interface on that really tricky and it's got quite a steep learning curve. This is a steep learning curve, but I find the interface much easier. Um, like everything can be found from here. It's like, oh, I want to change the materials. Okay, go to Shader Editor. Cool, there we go. Uh, if you want to change like something in the model, you just do it in your viewport. Uh, and if you want to change any render kind of settings, it's always on the right. Uh, so it, it, Blender used to be horrendous. You used to have to know, uh, that's why I never used it for years. You used to have to know all the shortcuts and like, it was terrible. I absolutely hated it. Um, I gave up on it after about a week. Um, but yeah, now it's so much easier. But all these little symbols and tabs, it's just the dream. Can you, like, uh, can you lift out like material map IDs and stuff like that from the renders? Uh, do you mean like... Like a, you know, that thing where you can get like the blocks of like where all your materials are and like shadows and... Yep. Uh, like, do you mean post. like... Oh, uh, like yeah, for post. Like I, exports. I actually don't know. You probably could. Um, actually, you definitely can. I just don't know how to. <laughs> it, <laughs> just, Google. Yeah, Google it. Um, you can do anything. That That's the thing about Blender. You can do like mm -hmm. anything. Um, but it would probably have something to do with the UV mapping. Um, that had just a random material. It's like, by right, you could, you could not be an architect and just go into a modeling sort of 3D animation career after this, if you're that good. Yeah, um, definitely. Like, a lot of people do. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, oh, I'll find them. They won, like, a President's Medal. Uh, Robots of Brixton. If oh, wants, yeah. yeah, if anyone wants to look at this, um, these were people that, uh, I'm not sure what software they used. But they used, uh, they were really into animation. I think they had a regret, to be honest, in architecture. They didn't enjoy architecture and they were like, I'm going to make a movie instead. Um, so they're architecture animators um, and they kind of touch on like urban problems. Um, but they, they have their own company now. I've forgotten the guy's name. Yeah. If you Google him, his website will come up. Uh, that's it, Nexus Studios, I think. Yeah. And they make all kinds of really cool 3D animations. And he was an architect. So, um, yeah. Worth looking at him if you're interested in that kind of thing. Are you a fan of Corridor Crew? What, sorry? Have you, have you seen a YouTube channel, Corridor Crew? I don't think so. Oh, well, they're just they're kind of like CGI animation team. Right. And they do a lot like really useful stuff, explaining yeah. graphics and principles like That's behind cool. it. I need to look them up. Um, yeah, I think the thing that sold me on Blender was the whole HCRI system. Uh, just being able to add a 3D image and just get perfect lighting every time, mm -hmm. with like realistic shot, like uh, reflections and stuff. Yeah, really fast. That... Like you can see, you can see how fast that's rendering. Um, like just move it; it's like almost fully rendered like, immediately. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's really helpful. I think. I'll definitely um, be looking into it next project. And, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I should have showed us this a month ago so we could all do it for our <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I would say, yeah, don't try, like, rush to learn it um, mm -hmm. for your final project. It is pretty scary. Um, yeah. I, I, see how I was talking about uh, to you, Brendan, about, like, how a texture works? You can see here, um, like, I can't open that. Actually, can I? No. Um, but their original creator created like hundreds of these nodes to create this pattern. And he can like adjust sliders and stuff like that just to change it subtly. So it's like a mathematical texture, really. 
yeah, it's it's quite mathematical. Um, like I would have thought that would make it slower. No, so because like procedural items are actually much faster. Like, see how I can like really quickly change the color. Um, instead of having to go back and I don't know, like what you would traditionally like, like click and drag something on. Like that, that's using like a procedural system. Um, computers prefer procedural to images. Because it's all math. And computers like math. Yeah, t-shirt. Hey, yeah. I seen it. I seen some people chatting, talking in the chat. But I don't think there's any questions. Yeah. So, well, I think if unless there's any final questions, um, thanks very much for taking the time to take us through it and. Um, Certainly, I think yeah, like it's definitely given a good overview to like now be able to go and in your own time like get into it or decide how you might want to use it. Um, yeah. Which like I certainly yeah, I didn't even know it really existed to be honest. So yeah, that's... until you see it, you're like oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, that does a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you you never see it used as like an architectural program. But yeah, no problem. Um, if anyone has any questions afterwards, feel free. I'm on Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. I was just going to quickly ask, is there, can you save like a preset? So say you've set up your architectural model, HDRI and everything. So you can almost just up or on a new yep. um, file and just kind of not yeah. quite one click, but not far off of it. Yeah. Once your HDRI is set up and your camera is like in the right place, you could quite easily just go file import and then just import the object, scale it down and you've got a model sitting there and you're in the correct environment. And it's really handy. So like, I, I could go back into Rhino, tweak something and just jump back in. Really yeah. is, is, there like a, is there a live link or do you have to re-update it? There's no live link. It's not like, uh, it doesn't have one software that it likes to, um, like interact with like I think Lumion is like SketchUp based, isn't it? Yeah. I think they they have like a base. I'm not sure. Or they might code it differently for different so softwares. It might be able to do like different like Rhino yeah. or whatever. But um or, that'll be coded specifically for that. Whereas this is more you can use anything. Like yeah. people use weird softwares that you've never even like heard of. Solidworks um, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um but yeah it's cool. That that um render doc as well. Um, that's really cool. Uh, I didn't. Uh, if anyone has any questions about that, because I kind of forgot about that. The whole importing from three uh, Google Maps into I think that's Blender. the best part of it. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so many people don't know <laughs> that exists. The, the only other thing I thought is you can import your own models into Google Earth, but then you can't render them. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's like doing it the other way. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that's no, cool. Um, a lot of people don't know about it, so it's good. Yeah, good to show. Yeah, that'll definitely be useful, I'm sure. Yep. Cool. Um, right, well, I think we'll leave it there. Um, no reason at all. Yeah, so this will be up. The recording will be um, posted to our YouTube channel. Um, so if anyone wants to like go and watch it back um, and see all the links and what Craig was doing, then that'll be readily available. But yeah.